Yeah, yeah. Unforgettable. And we're back with Unforgettable Conversations. Conversations episode. Season three, episode. You, you let him talk. Let me finish. <laughs> let him talk. You always interrupt me. My goodness. I don't even want to play anymore. <laughs> Were you invited or did you invite? Yeah. <laughs> Season I invited three. myself. Let him talk. <laughs> <laughs> Season three. Wait, what are we talking about? Episode. <laughs> Season three, episode eleven, I think. Okay. Are you done? All right. uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a serious conversation with all four of us as your guest Lido. Um as your as your host. <laughs> See, you got me all messed up. <laughs> as your host Lido, we have the skipper, we have Donnie Darko, and we have the one and only Richie Rich. Oh, yeah. Yes, me? sir. <coughs> yeah. Oh, and then uh Cholito. And Cholito. Thank you. We got Cholito in the house. Sir, your hat. He's kind of shy. He's a little shy. He's a good guy. We're gonna start with some icebreakers and then go all the way through. So I'm gonna start with ice. the first icebreaker. <laughs> which <laughs> which of your friends? Give it a second. Which of your friends do you think would be the first to become a millionaire? Well, that's a good one. Ooh. Not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. We had the window open. Sorry. For... We called 911 just because uh, we had an emergency they're, they're, earlier. Because they're, they're, these takes are us. fire. They are. Yeah. All right. Um, that was an ambulance. Though. Which of your friends do ambulance. you... Ambulance. Oh, man. The ambulance, too? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening now? Oh, there? that's animal control. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold no, on. Man, Did you hear that? They're going wild. Oh, it's oh, like Santa? Santa. It's, it's the Santa. It's the Santa, Santa, Santa parade. parade. Yeah, Santa parade. Parade. it's a parade, dude. Oh my god, uh, I, I thought it. there was was a dude, purge, dude. bro. That's what I yeah. I was thinking that too. I was like, this is kind of interesting. I know it kind of sounded weird. Oh, they passed. Yeah, yeah, they already passed. Yeah, because I thought this was a yeah. purge. No wonder I was like, it's a parade. <laughs> All right, so back to the question. <laughs> Which of your friends do you think would be the first to become a millionaire? Show Rich, Leo. start with you, and then we'll go around the table. <laughs> Why are you sniffing it? It smells good. I don't know. I don't have friends. What the heck? Well, what are we? <laughs> <laughs> He's I just like, you guys are acquaintances. <laughs> acquaintances. <laughs> Like, I'm just using you for uh, business. <laughs> for the shout out. For, uh, West Coast Friends Pro. <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to West Coast Fence Pros <laughs> for, uh, for well, they didn't really sponsor us. <laughs> they need a sponsor. I brought the Red Bulls. So, yeah. He brought the Red He's a sponsor. Oh, you got this. Uh, <laughs> do you want some? Oh, it's too late. I already, I already Rich, put, you do know. you have one? I don't. Right. You want to put Not at the top of my head. No. I mix it. All right. Um, Danny, do you have Stop. which of your friends do you think would be the first to become a millionaire? Oh, is that the question? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, first of my friends. Um, I mean, he's like none <laughs> millionaire. Um, it's possible. It, it's you know. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to like. Do you guys? Do any of you guys like get like lottery tickets or like? <laughs> I play the I play the lotto. You play the lotto. Yeah. I mean, you got a good chance, and you know, not really. It's funny. I was at the, when I was getting these Red Bulls. Mm -hmm. The lady in front of me was buying some cigarettes and a lottery ticket or a scratch card. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you the lady in front? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was digging through her purse looking for the cash, and she couldn't mm -hmm. find her cash. And I was like, "Well, scratch you. Maybe you'll win and pay for your cigarettes." <laughs> she goes, "I got to pay for those too." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, sorry. That was funny because <laughs> I actually use scratchers. Like whenever I go to the gas station, I'll just buy one. Sometimes I win twenty bucks, or I get the money that I paid for, and or something I lose. I'm like, or so you have a gambling problem. Sometimes it, it'll show up as a you get a free ticket. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you you'll you'll buy it, get a free ticket, and then get another one. To what scratch. happens if you just keep getting free tickets? I doubt you'll get that many free tickets. But if you do, you just keep going until it you either lose or. It's a you, cycle. A yeah, vicious you, cycle of a free ticket. Off topic, <laughs> talking about free tickets, this gas station I go to in Newberry Park, mm -hmm. it's, it, it says when you gas up, it says, would you like a car wash as well? Mm -hmm. And I say no. I, <laughs> I gas up, go inside. I push yes, they didn't give me the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I get a free car wash every time. Oh! <laughs> you just that my friend is incriminating yourself. Oh. Oh. What did we, we just said oh that? My God. <laughs> Don't Does incriminate anybody, yourself. Anybody want a car wash? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get a free car wash, uh, ladies and gents. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> West Coast fans, bro. <laughs> Brought to you by. Uh, uh, West Coast. Don't worry, he paid for everything. Uh, <laughs> I edit. own the gas station. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what was the question? Uh, Which of your friends do you think would be <laughs> the first to become a millionaire? Mm. I'm going to say James. I could see James. I could see James. I could see James. James. Yeah. I could see James too. Yeah. That was the only option I had. Yeah. James? The only option you had? Yeah. <laughs> 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 all I looked at all of you. Uh, yeah, James. <laughs> dude, James, he's smart. Yeah. He's yeah. Smart. yeah. James is a smart dude. Oh, yeah. For those who don't know, it's Santiago. Santiago, Santiago is the one that we're talking about. Yeah. He's probably the first to be. We miss him, man. We haven't had him mm-hmm. in a podcast in a long time. Should we FaceTime him? <laughs> nah, he's probably working or taking care of baby Jay. Yeah. He's, he's probably watching diapers. the other episodes. My son probably. gets to meet his son. They need to meet. Yeah, yeah that's true. Oh, yeah. yeah. So All right, face. let's go to the... Um, My icebreaker. Icebreaker. Oh, you didn't answer. Mm-hmm. Or did we all uh, just I said James. James. Or what, what did you decide? James. James. Yeah. James. Yeah. James. Yeah. yeah. Santiago. Uh, okay. <laughs> Santiago. What celebrity crushes did you have growing up? I think we had this one, right? Yeah, we've had it in the past. Oh, we actually talked about it with Jake <clears throat> a couple is, podcasts ago. This but this is incriminating. Oh, I, I'm gonna have to opt out. I apologize, babe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Alex, what celebrity crush did I have? Oh, I remember Jake said the uh, Green Power Rangers. <laughs> no, Wasn't that a guy? Power, that was a guy. <laughs> that was the that was the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jake said the Pink Power Rangers. I'm over here with sex. So uh, Jake say <laughs> like, uh, Power Rangers. Whatever you're Power into. Ranger. Whatever you're into. You know. That's true. Do you have a celebrity crush? Alex? I can't think of a celebrity crush. Still Shakira, dude. I've always had a crush on her since. Uh, Isn't she fifty or something like that? She's like fifty something. Yeah. Bro, her hips don't lie. Her, her hips don't lie. <laughs> she wasn't fifty when I was twelve. <laughs> yeah, because that makes it better. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <clears throat> what? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say the Green Power Ranger too. No, I thought you were gonna say the Green Power Ranger too. Let's see, Donnie J. <laughs> Donnie. The yellow Teletubby. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a guy too. No, um, no. I, don't, I mean, the I last, you said the last Scotty. time I said Scotty. Yeah. Scotty, yeah. Scotty. Scotty. Scotty, Scotty from Suits. Oh, yeah. from Suits. I don't know her actual name. Yeah, I don't know either. It's is she the which one is she? She's um. What's the other guy's name? Harvey. There's Harvey. Mike. The oh. Harvey. So Harvey's uh, assistant. Girlfriend, no, 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 his girlfriend. She's also a lawyer. She's a lawyer. Oh, Sky was a lawyer in the yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, uh, the actor she's from thing. from Darby from Darby's uh branch. Firm? Huh. Darby's firm. Okay, remember from England. Mm. She worked in England and London. Yeah. yeah, she ended up working for his. Um, mm. They ended up merging and they worked together. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, since he's opting now, uh, I think in the other episode I also said um, Olivia Wilde. Um, oh yeah, the, she's old. She's old now. Yeah. After I saw. Was it the show that you told, or the movie that? Don't you worry, told? darling. Don't worry, darling. Yeah. It was like we're literally saying the same things that we said in that podcast. Yeah, well, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah, mm. yeah. You oh, weren't right. even so, there though. So, were you? No, it was just me, you, and Jake. Oh, I thought we were. Well, we no, did that podcast. No, 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 no. It was the last. one. No, I th- he was in it too. With Jake, uh, do, we've had that question. This is the third time we've had that question. Yes. No, 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 no. Because there was one time we, with Jake. We did this. The, the most recent one was actually with him. Can I change this one? Well, yeah. Let's switch it up. Well, just we'll just go to a different. What's yours, Danny? Well, my icebreaker. Next, next icebreaker. No. Um, <clears throat> I didn't tell my crush. <laughs> your wife. <laughs> um, who in your friend group is the funniest? Danny, Donny. Donnie Darko. Um, <laughs> why are you laughing? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just trying to think who's the funniest. I don't know. I think all of you guys have like a a certain humor. Like what type of humors? Mm, Alex is like dumb. No, no. Humor. He's the too far humor. He's the too far humor. It takes which, it too far. Which I think, you know, it can be. When it's close, when it's close, like uh, like, like quarters. Like, incriminating? Like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, closed doors. Like man. it's closed, closed doors. doors. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say I'll say Alex. In public? Heck no. <laughs> Heck no. Yeah. Alex is the worst. Alex is the worst. You're the worst in public, dude. Okay. What the hey, hey. Every time we go to the theater. Sorry. What I fall asleep. That's my thing. That is true. <laughs> what about before you fall asleep? You, you're talking about the <laughs> noise. Excited. You, you're talking about the noises he makes. <laughs> but that's like yeah, I get excited. Not, like, yours are actually like, incriminating. Yeah. <laughs> His could be like a condition. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not a condition. All right. So you don't have a specific person? Um, Is it in this room or in my circle? It could be wherever. Circle. Um, circle or... I'll say... Um, I'll say Jonah. Reyes? Jonah Reyes, yeah. He's oh, actually... He's a... Okay. He's a funny little kid. Little guy. Rich, who's the funniest in your group? I think I'm pretty funny. You're the funniest? (laughs) (laughs) That was funny. That was was actually funny. I'm going to have to change my answer to Rich. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Alex? Oh, Danny. I I agree with Danny. I think Danny's the funniest one. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Rich is Rich is funny looking. Rich is pissed right now. (laughs) Rich. Who from your friend group is the best cook? Oh, Rich. Probably Rich. 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 <laughs> Rich. Yeah, I, I, I easily. Rich. For those who don't yeah. know, Richard cooks every single day. Mm-hmm. He's inviting all the Bromigos tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next episode of my house. <laughs> he does bomb barbecue all the time. And then I think I, on His Instagram pasta. you posted a, what was it, a stew that you made recently? Yeah, it was last you night. Stew? The Olive Garden Super Toscano. Oh, oh that was good. Dude, bomb. I was looking at him make it. Oh, man, dude. It, oh, yeah. it looked bomb, dude. He makes his pasta al dente. <laughs> it was bomb. <laughs> All the time when you when you post your food and I always see your, you with your latex gloves. That's how you know oh, that he's yeah. serious, mm-hmm. <laughs> dude. If you're cooking and you have yeah. latex gloves on, you're, that's how you know they're professional. No, I just started it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I was always just cooking with my hands with and I watch other cooking videos. videos. Like normal humans. And they and they have their gloves on. I'm like, that guy's a pro. Yeah. I need to look like a pro. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I went on and bought some gloves. Yeah. So they're not it's, good. They're it's kind of they're... like game day football. Look good. Play good. Yeah. Exactly. So but look it's, good. It's and all. You know, they're, good. they're not uh, cooking like <clears throat> sanitary gloves. They're <laughs> mechanic gloves. <laughs> <laughs> That's what gives it the flavor. Yeah. yeah. That uh, silicone, mm-hmm. that yeah. synthetic oil, that synthetic oil, oil. Synthetic oil. oil. Synthetic oil. full right synthetic, <laughs> <laughs> full synthetic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I think we. Oh, do you have a specific person? Rich, rich, rich. Okay, yeah, rich. Next one. Uh, let's go. <clears throat> Everyone already had theirs, huh? Yeah. Oh wait. All right, let's did, go deep. Can you give me one? Did Rich do? You, no, Rich, you did that. your icebreaker. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Where did that? Was the food? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't have one. <clears throat> what, what is it? That's the one I I want to change that one. Why'd you go deep? We were supposed to do the icebreaker. We're changing this now. Okay, do icebreaker. Did you already do that? I already did the icebreaker. It was the celebrity crush. How did you jump on? That okay, is now you deep don't get anything. No, I gave you this because I want to change it. This was when we were still doing the icebreaker, but I'm like, give me another deep. He's just wanting know what that means. He wants okay. to exactly. swap. I don't know what it means. Wait, wait, let, me, let me read it. Let me read it. Let's just do oh. it. <laughs> let me read it. No. Okay. Oh. I won't read it out loud. I just want to read it. This is a deeper. I need a deep. Oh my! Just do that one. <laughs> All right. Or just right. do one of the deeps. Do you consider yourself you to be deep. more of an extrovert or introvert, Alex? I'm an introvert. Are you? Yeah, I might be an extrovert, but You're I feel like an introvert. Introverted? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is Alex is inverted. <laughs> That's true. Whoa! No. That's very true. No, nah, I'm an introvert. Um, I feel like I, I read situations and depending on environments, I will choose to be introvert I'll or an two. extrovert. I'll say look tuned. So That's I am a, a bivert, like, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to say the same thing. So yeah. I'm yeah. bi as well. Yeah. So me and Rich are bi. <laughs> we weren't paying what? attention to what you were talking about. What uh, you guys come up with? You guys are buying the Bromie guys know what we're talking about. They know what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay, they're a little bit introvert and extrovert. Yes, we're uh, biverts. I think on the podcast I'm, I'm extrovert, but on, in real life race. I'm very introvert. I'm an introvert. Inter- <laughs> <I'm vertebrae. laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> next one then. Okay. Next one. Let's just. Here we go. Alex. Oh, this one's cool. Uh, what is the best birthday gift you've ever received? Ooh, that's a good one. What was, sorry, what was the question? I blacked out. What is the best birthday gift you've ever received? Um, I think for me, this is just a something like when I was little, when I was like probably like in elementary school, my dad gave me a hundred dollar bill. That made me feel like I was the richest kid ever, right? A hundred bucks when you're like in, in Mexico, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're so. <laughs> Actually, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, that man. is a lot of money. That is a lot, school, like, especially as a little kid. It's like two hundred thousand. Can you let me finish? <laughs> Can you let me finish the 
an- answer my question? Like 2,000 pesos, uh, dude. 200,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Are you done? You said... Finish your... Finish your are point. you done? A hundred... A hundred dollars? Are you done? <laughs> I'm waiting for him to be done. He's done. A hundred dollars? I'm not leaving. <laughs> are you done? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. A hundred dollars? hundred bucks here. <laughs> And so then I went to go buy a Need for Speed uh, Underground 2. Oh, okay, okay. That was the best game ever. That was, what, middle school? I think I was like fifth grade. Oh, elementary school. Hold okay. up. You spent 200, you spent 100 bucks on Need oh. for Speed? No. He, he obviously was, had changed. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. It was like, was was like, what, 50 bucks? Yeah. That would have been a horrible All person. right, what's the, what's the best gift you've ever gotten, Danny? <sighs> best gift I ever gotten. Hmm. That you didn't buy yourself. I don't know, dude. I I can't I I can't think of uh, any. I I, I like I I actually don't Your remember. Voice. I don't remember any <laughs> birthday gifts. Like off the top of my head. What about the guitar? The guitar wasn't a birthday gift. Who gave you that? Uh, I exchanged it. I exchanged an Xbox One for the guitar. Oh, I remember that was oh, last yeah, year, huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. And uh, then they wanted back their guitar. Wanted- <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh no, they didn't want it back. But they were just like, uh, was it an uh, even trade or was it uh, was it an even trade? I think so. Like the Xbox actually, I yeah. the Xbox is worth like two hundred. Um I Xbox One. So you were Xbox losing one, more. <clears throat> yeah, it's a guy I lost more. But because yeah, I guess the guitar is actually worth hundred fifty. Mm-hmm. I bought the Xbox One for hundred and fifty, but um it's like worth two hundred. <clears throat> oh okay. Yeah. Hmm. But no, no, like as far as back back to the birthday gifts, um or any I'm gift. A, I'm gonna say. Gift. I'm gonna say, life. Ha. Wow. That's wow. deep, right? That was my very first no, gift. Thanks. Went, thanks for ruining deeper. the game. I went deeper. You That's literally it. went deeper. We're done with this one. So try to top that. What about Rich? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, me. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. don't care. His answer tops all. That, it does. It does. It does. His, his answer is gonna be the baby. Oh wait, wait. What if it wasn't? Hold on. <laughs> 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 wait, that was on your birthday. It was, oh wait, yeah. Uh-huh. That's it, was a month, it was a month later, so yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah. It's a late birthday gift, but yeah. it was nonetheless birthday gift. Yeah. I've never had a birthday gift, so that was my first. Really? There you go. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joel. Um, I don't think I can really say a specific one. I, I think just all the birthday gifts that I've received. Um, they're all pretty sentimental. I don't think anybody kind of like like what were they. <laughs> Well, like, <laughs> like for you, socks. Well, for different different birthdays, like for mm-hmm. Alex, he bought me the LED light. Uh, on a yeah, both of you technically. Did. Sure. Both of you guys chipped in for that. No, you didn't pay me for it. Yes, I did. No, you did it. I sent you the money. I sent it again. <laughs> oh my gosh! But there, there's like a lot of different different stuff that it. I that I see it as very sentimental. Yeah, like uh, Danny in the past, he's bought me. Uh, a comic book that is very rare for oh, Amazing right. Spider-Man. Uh, my wife's gotten me a lot of gifts. Uh, one of the, I think probably the biggest one, probably is going to have to be for my wife. She got me, she got the New England Patriots to to wish me a happy birthday officially on a, on a card. Oh dang! Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it wasn't her. Like no, it was like officially from their organization. She she had she emailed for like I think three weeks straight and was trying to see like. If they can do some type of like something special, and what they did was they they sent out an official letter saying, uh, from a part of from the New England Patriots, we want to wish Joel really? a happy birthday. Dang, yeah, wow. So she went above and beyond for that. She did. It took her like three weeks just to do it. Did she have to tell it. him like, oh, he's dying? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a make a wish. He's, he's a make a wish <laughs> recipient. <laughs> no, but she like went through and like she was trying to. I messaged like different players on the teams, different Dang. organizations, oh, cool. trying to get the email and everything. So the fact that I still have that card too, that's like, yeah, that I think it's probably the best one. Cause that one, she's she, the keeper. She, she, uh, yeah. she went above and beyond to do that one. That's pretty cool. Did yeah. you do the same for her? Um, yeah. What'd you get her for, uh, uh for a birthday gift? Yeah, a sock? <laughs> Just one, not even a pair? <laughs> Just one. <laughs> um, no, I've, I've, I've gotten her some pretty good things. Like what? Um, I don't remember the different things. Just different things. Like like the last the last thing I bought her was when we were in as a birthday it, gift? Yeah. Oh. When we were in, in, in Rome. Um 
when in Rome. No, we were in Santorini. Mm -hmm. I, I gave her a bag that I bought specifically for her in Italy when we were in Rome. So cool. as like a memory thing. And I've gotten her like um, like a Polaroid. Um, Camera? Book, no, like a booklet so she can keep oh. all her like memories and everything organized. Uh, we also bought her like a little Polaroid printer so she could take pictures on her phone and print them out and save them as an actual Polaroid. So, yeah, just different things here and there. So, yeah. Yeah. Pretty good gifts. Nice. Who's next? Next question. You you just asked that right? Yeah, so, no, Danny did. No, you did. Oh, oh yeah, you did. A gift. Yeah. <clears throat> what is at the top of your bucket list? Let's start with you, Danny. Another list. Um, <laughs> a bucket. <laughs> um, on top of my bucket list. Um, or just name like something at the very very top. Just name anything that might be in your bucket list. <clears throat> I want to buy a house. Oh, well, that's a good one. Yeah, that's like a Rich, Lego. a little little Lego house. I want to go skydiving. Oh, really? That'd be a pretty good one. Alex, there's, yeah. there's always been a weight <clears throat> limit, so I think you could pay extra. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was able to do it. A lot of extra. <laughs> it's <laughs> I'm yeah, a lot to extra. Say. <laughs> <laughs> Me, yeah, it's a lot of extra. Um, I think I had to pay an extra like eighty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I, really? I th I, yeah. I don't know. You could actually pay extra. I, I think it's. <clears throat> um, they told me that I think it's like somewhere around two two hundred and twenty pounds where they or two hundred and thirty yeah, pounds. Is it that they like? The cutoff, it's the cutoff, yeah. and then you can pay at if you go above a certain like weight, you pay extra. It, like what? Do they use like a different type of parachute or what? I think they use a bigger plane. They use <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it's the plane that can't handle you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's just um. Because of like certain resistance from the wind because of the weight or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Weight um, being dispersed. <laughs> Why is that so funny, Alex? Yeah. Why is that so what? funny, bro? <laughs> you messed up, Alex. Yeah, what the heck, man? No, I mean, um, they charge are you, you more if you get in. Uh, are you done? It would be the skinniest guy here for laughing. Yeah. Are you done? Are you done? <laughs> no, We're I'm waiting for you to be done. <laughs> no, in a hot air balloon, they charge people more if you yeah. weigh more. Yeah, they do. No, hot air balloon. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. the same thing. I don't know exactly if it's the same too. exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> but most likely, Why? yeah, it's probably something you to get into a along the line of that. Hot tub. All right, Alex, do you have a specific... Uh, like a thing on my... Bucket list? Bucket bucket list. list. Um, Why do they call it a bucket list? Because it's a, it's a list of things you want to do before you kick the bucket, a.k.a. die. Kick what bucket? The kick the bucket, bucket is uh, the, like kicking the bucket and dying. Really? Yeah. Never once heard that. It's yeah. a fr it's an old phrase. From who? That's why they call it from Bucket Man. <laughs> I don't know. Alex, uh, answer your question. The weather guy. The weather guy. The weather I want to go back to Europe, but I want to go to the countryside. and Never got to go. So Italy, Greece, and Turkey Ooh, are Turkey. my top three countries. Turkey legs. I like well, turkeys. You had turkey Thanksgiving. Turkey sandwiches. Turkey sandwich. Turkey, turkey leg. legs. Mm. Turkey bacon. That that'd be a pretty cool <clears throat> location to go yeah. to. Turkey. Um, for mine, I think I would just, I don't know, uh, definitely just travel, travel more. Like where? Places I haven't been to, like, uh, Japan, maybe China, Singapore, um, maybe somewhere in the States that I haven't traveled to, like Texas or stuff like that. Nebraska. Would, would you ever Washington. go? Washington. Would you ever go under there? Yakima. We've gone huh? to Washington. Would you ever go under there? No, but like to Yakima. I'm not gonna. I'm not, I'm not gonna fall for that. No. Come on. Would you ever go under there? I know what you're trying to say. What about you, Rich? I don't know the joke, so I'm gonna fall for it. I know where. You didn't know the joke? I didn't. It. I didn't know the joke either, but I figured out right. once uh, he was gonna play it. Yeah, made you say underwear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Next. Next one. Please mention your turn. Yeah. That was a good one. What are people's first impression of you? I could tell you. No, yeah. <laughs> how about we? How about we tell each Great other's first impression? How about we tell each other's? Joel, yeah. he was an like, idiot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's toys. <clears throat> um, let's start with. Uh, let's start with Rich. Rich, I'm gonna first say impression. Great first impression. I think yeah. you were. You yeah, were, yeah. Like you were very like just nice. very fluid, very easy to talk to right away. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you were like, like you know, like a big yeah. teddy bear. You're like, like oh, very, up, man? like, and you didn't even know friend, friendly. Yeah, like yeah. friendly, like right off the bat, like you could feel like, oh, I could be chill with this guy. See, like, see, like who does you this, do, man? dude? Who does this? Are those expired? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, sure, Check I need them. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> <laughs> Cholito, Cholito, you can't eat them. The Cholito eats anything. No. Yeah. What are these? Eat a burrito, though. Dude. Yeah. What are these? Twizzlers. Are they cut up? Cut up. Yeah, I think um, the first time I met you, it was the same thing. Like you were easy to talk to. I mean, mm-hmm. kind of like I met you. Wow, you, we're we're gonna get all the chewing on there. <laughs> I think I met you at Jackie's wedding. Did you? I Was think we seen each other, but we we didn't talk till Jackie's wedding. I'm trying to Whoa. remember Jackie's wedding. You were you were. Amigos. Was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still there? right next to you. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I think so, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because I just remember once we started talking, it was like like Easy. casual. It, yeah. was, it wasn't like... Um, Were you talking smack about him? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but that's why. We're friends now. <laughs> no, no it, was just, it, was just, it was just casual. I mean, even the, the first time we brought you on the podcast, we only knew each other for like so long. Yeah. Yeah, so it was easy just to bring you into the group and... Um, yeah, I think that was my first impression of you. It was, it was very friendly. Just thank you. Very good. What about like you guys? It. What about Danny? Danny, so. I don't even remember when I met him. Honestly, I don't care about him. Love you too. <laughs> when I met Danny, he was he was chunkier. Oh, that's the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me. Now he's getting the ladies. Hey, and the men. Las Dorcas. <laughs> Las Dorcas. And the men. I'm getting las hermanas. Okay. Um, what about Alex? Honestly, when I met <laughs> when I met him, I, I, I didn't know if I was. I just I didn't know if I was done. I, <laughs> are you done? <laughs> no, I actually thought you were gay. <laughs> no, no, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right, all right. No. Um, when I when I first met him, <laughs> I didn't know if I should speak English or Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> are you done? Are you done? Are you, are you done? done? Are you done? All right, I'm done. <laughs> oh, great guy, great guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think you uh, guys are racist. I think uh, you were cool. Um, I you think, were. No, uh, you like Passons when I first met him. He was cool. He is cool. Um, yeah. I think uh, it was total opposite. Like you, okay, not to say. That you look like someone that would speak Spanish. You actually sounded very. <laughs> no, let me finish. Let me finish. You're very white. You're kinda. You're very proper. American. Proper is the way to say it. Like you speak what, properly. Proper Mexican. No. Yeah. Speak like, into the mic, sir. Okay. I proper Mexican. Like I right, don't yell have, into the mic. You have a very extensive vocabulary. Mm. That's what I meant. Educated. Extensive. Like, Edifying. and I think. A lot of that was not only from your your education and upbringing, but also from the Navy heritage. No, it wasn't. So, I didn't learn anything in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that's my impression of you. In the Navy, you looked intelligent. That's right. And you yeah. looked, but <laughs> you sounded different. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You know what? Military. You, I appreciate it. I thought you were in the military. I was. Well, <laughs> Navy. <laughs> Navy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Reserves. All right, next question. All right. Say reserve. Um, <laughs> I'm the next one, right? Yeah. Do you, can, do you, oh, I had already done this one. Wait, um, did we answer the question about everybody? First impression? Oh, about Joel. We didn't oh, answer about Joel. What was your guys' first impressions of me? Well, <laughs> <laughs> when I was born, I was oh, like, God. who the heck is this guy? Why he ugly? Why, Why does he like, look like mm-hmm. me? Yeah. Low key, you look like a jerk. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. He smelled like one, too. What does that even mean? <laughs> you look like a hardworking guy, but he's a jerk. You think so? Yeah. What What was it that, that gave you that feeling or, or that, like, oh, this was probably um, a jerk? face. Okay. Still looks like a jerk to me. Your face. <laughs> right? Your face? face. Looks serious. Your face. I got that resting uh, B face. What's the B stand for? Babe. Baby, baby. <laughs> baby. the resting, resting baby, baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, 
Yeah, you don't want to know, dude. Well, the Bromigos <laughs> want to know. I, I thought you were gay because you were flirting with me. <laughs> he thought you were cute in both the <laughs> classes. Too. He thought you were cute. <laughs> I still do. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Next, ne- next question. Next question. <laughs> Whose right. turn is it? It's my turn. It's your turn now. I mean, come on, ladies and men, right? He's married. Uh, I'm married, but not to a man. See the ring. <sighs> All right. What is a mistake you keep on repeating? I keep letting this guy talk. <laughs> um, Why are you showing up to the are podcast? You are you done? <laughs> Why are you right. letting him? Let, let, let's start with you. What's, what's a mistake you keep on repeating? Hanging out with this idiot. <laughs> Playing Call of Duty with him. Are you done? <laughs> and playing Call of Duty with him until three in the morning, uh, dude. I'm the one that has to play with him. This guy's dog water. <laughs> I am dog water. I don't play like twenty four seven like you, dude. Him. I have to carry him all the time. <coughs> my goodness. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. No, seriously, what's what's a mistake that you keep on repeating? Getting out with this idiot. Look at him. <laughs> oh, okay, Danny. What's a mistake you, you, keep, you keep on making? No. Now I'm unemployed like him. <laughs> that that is true. Oh. What's the mistake you keep on doing? I keep giving this guy advice and he doesn't pay attention to it, man. <laughs> Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? I think we're done. Okay, I think we're done. I'm about to end the podcast. <laughs> Are we done? No, let's see. Uh, uh, mistake. Mistake. Well, you go first. An actual I already one. answered. Like an, actual. an actual one. That is my actual one. All right, All right Rich, do you have one? Um, mistake you keep on repeating. I keep making plans without telling my wife. <laughs> <laughs> like Did the she know that you were, oh. were going to be here? Yeah, but she forgot. Oh, well, oh. but you told her. Today. <laughs> oh. Actually, uh, when I asked you, yeah, 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 she was there. Yeah. But she yeah. thought it was just like a casual invite. You know those invites are not serious? All my invites are serious. <laughs> That's why none of my friends show up. I go. Like, what are uh, like those ones? Like, we should do dinner sometime. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Like, oh, I'll think about it. Or, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, like, but you I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll get back before. to you. you know? And she knows about them, right? About the podcast? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she was. I was at the podcast that day, babe. <laughs> yeah. Here. He, um, he was. He was already married by the time we did the first podcast that he got invited to. Yeah. Yeah. When we first started it. So. Um, let's see. What about you, Danny? Do you have a specific one? Um, a mistake that I keep making. Um, sometimes I'm too transparent with people. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Was that too deep? No. No. Let's go there. Like, transparent like, as in like, like what? Uh like I'll just be honest with them. And sometimes I Brut- brutally honest. No, nah, no, nah, not like no, nah, not brutally honest. Just like. Um, personal stuff. Yeah, like personal stuff. Like uh, I'll I'll open up with personal stuff, and it's like, ah, should I have done that? Like, do I really know the person enough to like really open up to them like that? It's a common mistake. I trust yeah. people too much. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm trying to think. Um, for me, something that I keep a mistake that I keep on repeating. <clears throat> That one's kind of tough. I'm trying to think of one. I keep I keep eating these. That's a mistake. It's gonna get me fat again. <laughs> Man, um, I don't know. I can't think of a specific mistake that I keep on repeating. I have one that I just thought about. So like, I wake up in the morning, but I'll be laying in bed, and I always tell myself I gotta get out of bed instead of being on my phone or just like pretending to fall asleep when I know I'm like I'm not gonna go back to sleep, but I'm just chilling in my bed. Not doing anything. I'm like, mm. you know, I always tell myself like, oh, I need to wake up and go do something, or I'll just be on my phone. Like, oh, I need to start doing this tomorrow. I think I'd, I'd probably <laughs> kind of pick up, uh, piggyback on that because uh, I think there's a lot of things that procrastinate. Procra- oh. Yeah, <clears throat> procrastinate a lot of stuff where I shouldn't, and then it's a mistake that I just keep on repeating where it's like, Oh, I'll catch up and then I'll just let it happen again Mm. and then catch up and then let it happen again. So Mm, with certain things, like, I mean, one of the big ones was the backsplash that I was supposed to finish. Oh yeah. Just today I had to tear it all down again and and start again. And even then it had, I had left that stain like that for the longest time. So if I don't finish it, Mm -hmm. I'm going to procrastinate again and 
it's gonna happen again. So mm. that would be one Procast- per- per- Pro. procrastination. 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 Procrastinate. Procrastination. Procrastination. I don't think is it. Is that a, is that a word? Procrastination. I don't know how to pronounce it. Procrastinate. Not, procrastinate. P R O. But is it the objective oh. or the procrastination? Is that even a word? Yeah. Is that what you're that's asking? What was, yeah, that's what I was asking. Pro- procrastination. Pro- you're saying procrastination. I don't know what procrastination. I, I can't procrastinate. pronounce the word procrastination. That's a re- that's a mistake. I keep repeating. <laughs> <laughs> Using a word that doesn't exist. Tries to overpronounce words. <laughs> All right. Um, next one, Alex. You were the next. Um, let's see. All right. All right. Uh, in what ways do you feel that you are limited? Mm. In what ways started? do you feel? So I think I'll start. So financially, so like what Danny had said earlier, like something in his bucket list to have a house. I want to have a house, but I feel like I'm limited with not having enough funds to be able to actually i could probably do it but i feel like i want to i'm one of those people that i don't want to ever be in debt but mm. i know when it comes to like something big like a car or house i'm gonna have to either like yeah. get a loan which <clears throat> means i'll be in debt but like ev- like everything that i've ever bought you, before so like even like cars off. cars were like fully paid off fully paid off like my truck <laughs> my lexus all the cars all the things every i've never been on credit i've never had to get a loan and i've never like basically like how to owe or be in debt so i feel like i'm limited to be able to have a home or a nice car because i feel like i need to have the money which i know i don't have to but it's just i'm one mm. of those people like i want to be secured you know like a like a mental thing yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah that's a that's a good one because yeah if you had the financial funds to buy a house fully and even if it blew through a, a lot of your savings You'd prefer that versus getting a loan. Yeah, or having, having to, to pay, pay you know, monthly which I know mortgage. I probably will because, you know, homes here in California are 750K minimum. So, yeah, you know, who has that like right now or unless you're like James and become a millionaire mm. soon. Yeah, that, no, that's true. I think, uh, yeah, I, w- I would agree with you on that because even for me, like I think right now at this point in my life, it's the most debt I've been in. Because of the the home itself, it's well over three hundred thousand dollars in debt. That's already in the like I owe mm-hmm. because of the house. So even though like yeah, that's kind of like a norm where people pay a mortgage, but it's still debt. Like any like a credit card or a car payment or some type of loan, personal loan or something like that. It's still like you have interest on top of that. You still have a finance financing that you're doing, and then also. Um, it's a monthly thing that you're also paying. So, yeah, I, I can see that. <clears throat> as far as, uh, what was the question again? Uh, in, in what ways what? do you feel you, that you've been limited? Or that you are limited? I think a lot of my projects I could expand and have further progress if I had more financial means towards it. So I, I think kind of like yours, a financial... <clears throat> limitation but then but then again i think of uh something that comes too easy won't be as successful as something that comes hard and grows organically amen Mm. yeah danny yeah i'll I'll go financial too (laughs) money it's the the easy simple one to to kind of point out i took cop out <clears throat> it's a cop out. It's definitely a cop out. I just couldn't think of any other ones. <laughs> Richie Rich. Can I get deep? Yeah, get deep. Get real deep. Knees deep. What would you do if fear wasn't in the way? Mm. Fear? If fear? Fear wasn't in the way. Fear. You feel, you feel like the mental, like health, or like the mental fear could be. Like, that's uh, a good li- one. Limiting like people. I've been, I've been in the works for starting this company. We're like, we're there. Like, mm-hmm. Basically there. Yeah. The closer I get to it. I've built a business two times, two different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Third time, there's those times <clears throat> I was like super courageous, you know, mm-hmm. ready to like take my keys to the city, you know. Mm-hmm. This time around, I'm scared, bro. And and I feel like, do you th- do you think you're scared or like do you think you have that fear because like there's more responsibility, there's more risk, more risk? Yeah. I didn't have a wife. Didn't exactly. Have a kid. Yeah. Exactly. 
There's more to lose if exactly if, yeah. if you. It, I mean, it was always sink or swim, but. Mm-hmm. But now it's like you got to carry your state. family with. Now it's more of a think or swim. What? What? No, no. I just was thinking of the TD Ameritrade. Their platform is called Think or Swim. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. So your fear mm-hmm. of starting this business here is different because now you have a wife and a kid, your family, basically. Like, right. how does that change? I just want to like be able to kind of understand that. Because I was reckless. I was a single reckless guy. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But that um, recklessness and fearlessness. Well, it's like that, that's what you to that's build what allowed. That business. Yeah, allowed courage. Allowed allowed you know, courage because you know. like, in my eyes, I didn't have nothing to lose. Yeah, mm-hmm. I put all this. Like everything I had into it. Yeah, you were fine with the. You were fine with accepting failure yeah. on your own. Yeah. But now, as soon as like you know, now that there's family, now that you know you have your wife, you have yeah. your kid, if you do sink, you're you're having to pull them down with. Yeah, you. And, it, and it's crazy because this then I like quit my job the day I got the license with no like leads of jobs or mm. any sort. You know, I just quit my job, went 100 miles an hour. Now yeah. I got the license and I'm like. Keeping my job in the meantime while jobs yeah. start to come. <laughs> yeah. mm, I you see know? what you mean. That's crazy. And then just to kind of like <clears throat> mention it, like how you're saying, like now you kind of think about it twice. You know, you're not just like making that decision like, oh, I'm just going to leave my job. I'll find something, you know? Yeah. Like for me, I was thinking about that too. Like I just recently quit my job and mm-hmm. that was just because of circumstances and it was my own choice. But I was just saying to myself, like, I don't think I would have done that decision of lose or leave my job if I had a, a you know, a spouse or a yeah. kid, you know? Yeah. Like it's something exactly. like, I'm like, no, like what if, yeah, that fear of like, what no, if I don't find something? What if I don't have, you know, a way to financially support my family and myself yeah. or some like all of us. So I'm like, but I'm like, you know what, if I right now like fail or I don't find something like it's all right, you know? But I was just thinking about that right now. Like when you said about your wife and your kid, I'm like, yeah, I would have totally like have yeah. that fear. Like, you would you would have kept your job. I would have kept my job. I wouldn't like ah oh, just leave it, or at least I would have had something already like you know lined up. Lined yeah. up. I mean, yeah, I think the best time to fail is when you're single and when you don't have like mm-hmm. like those responsibilities of like a wife or a, of a, a kid. You know? And somebody told me this is the best time to start a business. I'm like, what? Yeah, I know. I, I don't. I don't know. I in a, in an extent, I don't. I don't agree. Yeah, it's a scary time to start a business. I kind of would agree with that a little bit because mm-hmm. you. you Okay, so you kind of have to see it the opposite way. There's been a lot of people before you that have started their business. Well, they have probably more than one kid mm-hmm. and a, mar- uh, a marriage and a house and maybe even more of risk in their in their plate that they would have to risk that all to potentially build something greater. Um, I'd say those people probably tapped into the fact that that drive that they get from I have to make this work because of the fact that I have a house or I have a, a wife, I have kids, yep, I have I have that responsibility that I have to provide one way or another. I have to make it win. Like I have to win. Yeah. So I need to bring home the bacon. So I think those people tap into that and force themselves to face that fear and push past it and actually start their business and, and, and try to get leads and try to prepare everything as much as possible but like like anything even with the kids you're never going to really fully be prepared for it for it all yeah so uh, but yeah i think i I think i would agree with you because but even me starting my business uh, there was a lot of times where i mean right now it's not at the point where i want it to be Mm -hmm. and it definitely needs to grow further but a lot of it is yeah there was a step back because of the fear of okay well what if we can't get this job done or what if the the financial means aren't there or what if the calls aren't coming like the phone isn't ringing how am i supposed to do it how am i supposed to move forward so uh, it's definitely nicer when you have a job to anchor you down to like okay if this doesn't work out we still have this money coming in every single paycheck type of deal so yeah, I'd say, um, yeah, fear does play into it yeah. a lot because if uh, fear wasn't in there, you you wouldn't double get double double guess your your. If there wasn't fear, there'd be your options. Like, million more businesses in this world. Definitely, yeah, could be. But also, I think fear is good. Yeah. In a sense, yeah. I don't want to say like, oh, you know, because yeah, because the fear, yeah, exactly, is driving you to. Be, be mindful cautious. of what you do, yeah. Not yeah. to just be reckless, you know. 
you're at least being limited or you're like being wise about what you decide to do, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's no, I would agree with that. A little bit of fear is fine, but when it's just controlling everything. Overwhelming fear is, is where you don't where move anywhere. Businesses go to fail. Yeah. Or, or where you stay in starts. your comfort zone and never grow out of it. Or you're just a employee for the rest of your life working for someone else. And that's it. And, and Nothing I, wrong with that, though. Yeah. And I, and I was I was talking to this guy one time. He was an older guy. And um, he had the same job for like 20 years. But the guy's pay is crap, man. Mm. It's crap. Like he told me, like, yeah. and I didn't tell him that because, you know. Yeah, right. But like, he did tell me his pay. And, and he had like six kids. And they're like, they're older now. But he had those kids that since like, I mean, he had that job since those kids were young. Oh, really? You know, and. But like, which is crazy, because a lot of those older guys, they stick to what worked, yeah, mm-hmm. because of fear, you know, mm. which is wild, because like, yeah, I don't know, it's just a thought, you know, because mm-hmm. now they kind of stick to what there. what works because because their family is at stake, right? Yeah, because if you think about it, if they venture off and try something different, that could mean there's a month without groceries or something like that or a yeah. week without a paycheck or something like that that can affect them tremendously and i think ultimately the best way to do it is kind of like the way alex did it where you build up a good little cushion and even like for us we have emergency fund money this is just general money for yeah. any emergency that pops up like i was telling you guys earlier about the 1600 dollars sprinkler repair mm. that we need to do in the house i mean or not repair but like up to date stuff that's just a random miscellaneous bill Mm. that's got to get paid regardless of if you're making more money if you're making less money if you made the same amount of money so emergency emergency fund money is is good for you and same thing for like businesses emergency fund money or expansion money yeah save up that money so that there is that cushion of in case something bad happens you're not doing it the way you were doing it before where it's like okay i'm fearless let's go try it if it works, it works. If it doesn't, at least you have that to cushion you. Yeah. So it's not that hard of a fall. So I think if if a lot of people have a like can save up for a specific like emergency fund to cushion certain <clears throat> projects that they're gonna pursue, they would they would have a bigger chance. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think everybody has the opportunity to do that. You know, to create that cushion money. You know, there's families that. <clears throat> Unfortunately, oh, sure. you know, the paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, they live paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, the the husband, the wife, they're both working their butts off. And like you were saying how that guy had that job for 20 plus years and never came out of that or just kept on doing what he knew was the only thing he knew, basically. Uh, sometimes they're limited to time, to resources, to the language. You know, a lot of people coming yeah. to the U.S. not you know, knowing the language and just settling with whatever job they find. And that's all they know. That's all they do for the rest of their lives. And they're okay with it, but sometimes not because they want to, but because that's the only thing that's available for them. Maybe they would want something better. And obviously sometimes the kids are the ones that might have the opportunity to be able to change that, you know, not stay with that kind of pattern. You know, I think it's also like perspective too. Like they know going into that, the situation that they're heading into, they know, you know, okay, well, you know, I'm this much years old. I have a family. I have, you know, kids that I'm trying to raise. Like, I'm not going to be able to take certain risks. So I have to make my situation as best as I can so that my kids can grow up and be in even better situations. And, you know, we've talked about it before. Like, that's essentially the best. That's that's almost every goal for a father or for a parent is to have your kids grow up in a better situation than you grew up in. I, I would agree with what you said, Alex, but I can't because even though you're right, there's a lot of people out there that have limitations. That's that's the beauty of, of the, the whole American dream here. There is opportunity to become more. There is chances to, okay, yeah, the paycheck to paycheck, that sucks and that seems like it's a possible it's it's gonna stay like that unless you pick up a second job and even though yes you're gonna have to sacrifice maybe spending some time with your kids or having to do a 
I don't know, 50 hour week, 60 hour week, you're trying to get yourself out of that situation. And that's the only way that you can actually do it. And if you don't take the chances, you'll, you'll never get out of it. And I know that there's a lot of people that language barriers here is a difficulty, but there's night school, there's YouTube, there's different ways for you to learn the language. Even if it's difficult, there is ways you can try and ask for help and get to that point where you now have a new skill that can benefit you because there's, I, I know for sure, like in the past I've, I've had different people that could have became technicians at certain jobs that I was at, but the language barrier was one of the things that they couldn't speak the English. Mm -hmm. They knew the job, but they couldn't speak English. So they couldn't get the job. So if they went on YouTube, spent an hour on I mean, it, it depends a on you know how people learn because some people learn yeah. quick, some people you know it takes yeah, takes it, a bit of time. But how much is like going to the library and picking up a how to learn English? But you, you know, like or the, the other thing is, as you else. grow older, your cognitive skills are, are they're not as as uh, you're not as yeah they're more slowed down. They're more uh, it's it's harder to learn. Yes, when you're a but lot, when you're older than but when you're younger. the thing about you being older is you also know the best way you learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know now versus like go, being in school, I do way better with videos and audio. Mm -hmm. If I watch something and if I can hear it, I can learn faster. The way I did m my testing for my license wasn't through open book and just doing that. It was DVDs and audio audiobooks. That's the way I got my license. I, I believe the same way. If the older you get, the more of a understanding on, okay, mm -hmm. I don't know how to read and learn at the same time, but I can do audiobooks. I can't do videos, but I can do audiobooks. Well, again, we're we're kind of talking like right now with that. How old were you for what? When when you realized, you know, how, how you learned and everything? Because I feel like that to to a certain extent, right now you're still young. Mm -hmm. I'd say right. You know, where as if you're fifty, sixty, like even though yeah, say you do learn better with audiobooks and stuff, you're still at a bigger disadvantage just because. You're not as a sponge as when you were when you were younger. Like I, I, I don't know the exact statistic or what what age it cuts off, but there's a certain age where you pick up things very fluidly, mm -hmm. and at a certain point, it just kind of like knocks off. Like it's mm -hmm. harder to grasp and understand things and learn. Right and learn. You see a lot of. I mean, there's rare occasions where like you see. 50 60 year olds on iphones like emails sending emails you know and like they're all modern and everything there's other people that just struggle it they they're looking at it like you know like like right. but like it's easy for us but for them it could be it's, it's hard to it's adjust hard. to yeah hard to adjust to. let's just say right. like for example let's let's just say our moms mm -hmm. why don't they learn right now like english why don't they get a better job mm -hmm. just think about the limitations that they have Sure, you can say they have all the free time. Sure, they can listen to audiobooks and all that stuff. But it becomes harder. The brain is like, you know, it's a machine that starts to wear down. And, you know, our whole body basically wears down. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, your highest priority like every day is like, I got to eat, I got to work, and I got to sleep, you know. Mm -hmm. And then anything else that you could fit in, like, sure. But it's, you have to know where to find the time to do yeah not just learning but other things like if you look at like our parents alone like you see my mom knows a lot more english than my dad right. but my mom was also younger like she's like there's a seven year gap right there like she's younger and she was able to you know um Dang you know, your understand. Dad. <laughs> yeah so so like there's that gap but that was enough for her to be able to uh, grasp and understand things rather than my dad who he's been you know he's been in, in America for like the longest time, but mm -hmm. still it's, you know, it's a struggle Hard. for him. Yeah. You know? it, it just really depends. But even then, <laughs> my dad went to a trade school here mm -hmm. and that was English based. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of it isn't, like I said, he got, he, he got his, his license as a welder. Mm -hmm. And when he got here, he didn't know that much English either. Right. And even though, even now he probably knows more English than before. He still had a struggle in an actual school setting because of the training. But he still pursued. But he pursued yeah, he it. Still pursued him. And, and like, he got it. This is gonna sound. This is gonna sound rude, but it, whether you want it, either you want it or you don't. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and 
I was a coach for a little bit, and I and I used to tell these guys like a couple guys that were losing a lot, and I would tell them like, you just don't want to bad. Enough. Yeah, it's true. You just don't want to bad enough. Mm -hmm. And I told him, look at these guys. This guy wanted to beat you bad enough, and he beat you. He made you look like a fool. Mm -hmm. you and know? it's true because yeah. if you think about it, if I'm if I'm out there an hour early trying to get further, like if you're talking about competition, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get better way further. Than, than the other guy if he's spending eight hours and I'm spending nine or ten hours oh, yeah. every single day there's gonna be a big difference mm -hmm. so let's say that that's why like a lot of you guys know I got rid of my TV why because I thought it was a distraction so mm -hmm. I can further myself in certain things that I want to educate myself on as well as audiobooks I read a lot of or I listen to a lot of audiobooks because I want to push myself even further mm -hmm. I do think that Compared to people in my age, I have accomplished a lot the way that you've accomplished a lot in our age. We could go back and look at our friends that maybe chose different paths and they weren't as successful at, at certain things or the certain things that they were very passionate about but didn't pursue it and it affected them in a negative way. But let's say if Alex decided to spend one hour every single day for the next 12 months to learn about electrical, mm. anything electrical based. By the end of the year, I can guarantee you, he'll probably be doing more proficient electrical jobs than a lot of average people that are electricians. Because, because mm -hmm. he wanted to bad enough. Mm -hmm. right. Because you wanted to bad enough, you put the time into it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know Spanish. And I've never wanted to learn bad enough, which is why I still don't know Spanish. Yeah. yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't want to bad enough. But even yeah. even like but what I, he was talking about earlier about the, the guys that you ended up mentoring mm -hmm. in the landscaping business that you have, uh, your uh, wife's uh, cousins. Yeah. What happened when they when they went to you and pretty much asked, okay, you teach me, I'll, I'll pick up as much as I can oh, and yeah. go from there. Oh, yeah. What were the results? They, they yeah they're mm. killing it yeah they're killing it yeah they're getting great reviews and it's all because they, they push to. themselves more yeah. Mm. yeah and i think i mean i don't know if, if me and alex are on the same page but i'm not arguing that it's impossible for you know once at a certain age that you know it's impossible to be able to you know reach a certain goal i'm just saying there there becomes a um a threshold to where it's it's just you're harder you're limited Oh yeah. Um, so like down, when you're younger, harder. when you're younger, you're a sponge. It, it's there's a lot more institution, mm -hmm. and not you don't need as much determination to get what you want. Uh, at a certain point, your age meets that institution where it's like you can't learn. Like it's harder to learn. Mm -hmm. So now you need even more determination to reach what you want to learn. So that's what I mean. And so I mean, obviously, when you get older, it's it's hard to learn. So yeah. you need to literally want it, like you said. You have to want it. To be able to get it, bro. What size shoe do you wear? Me, I'm, a, I'm a 11 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of left field. <laughs> they look big. Yeah, you know what they say. Big feet. Big socks. Big, big, big socks. socks. Yeah, I don't know. I just think, I think if someone's truly motivated oh, yeah. enough, mm -hmm. they they yeah, can accomplish anything. Yeah, yeah. I I can tell you right now, if you gave me six weeks and one specific topic. And I was motivated to do it. I could get it down. I could I could do whatever job you wanted me to do. But it also depends on how motivated I, I am. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How passion. How much time I'm putting in. Because hands down, if it's like, oh, okay, well, you are gonna go try to become. I want an you to become or something like that. I don't know. I want A you to become ballerina. the first woman's astronaut to touch the moon. Okay, well, I'm not a woman. Exactly. So you won't do it. I could be the He's not motivated. Don't want not motivated. Enough. He's, He's not just motivated. not motivated. <laughs> <laughs> we just said you could be, be or do anything you want if you no, really but like, are okay, motivated. Let's say, let's say um, um, CHP. Mm -hmm. We're trying to uh, work with the CHP. Mm -hmm. If I put the time in, maybe try to get like some type of uh, associates to make my resume look better, and maybe some other positions as a call taker for T-Mobile or something like that. I don't know that has somewhat of a resume that I can present to them, then I could have 
potentially a higher percentage than other people, right? No. You need a bachelor's. Okay, let's say I pushed, I had had enough time to actually get my bachelor's. And then part-time I was doing call taking for, I don't know, a clinic. That would also make me look good in their eyes when I do go to apply to potentially get the job. Because not only I'll have work experience, but a bachelor's in that. But it all takes time. It all takes determination and passion to really get to that point. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Initially. <laughs> Statistically. Statistically. Emotionally. Hypoth- hypothetically. hypothetically. <laughs> In the last few um, like weeks, I've realized it's not just like <coughs> motivation will just get you to a certain point. Like that's great and stuff. And you'll feel just good drive. when you have that motivation, that yeah. drive. Like mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, you're like, oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow or this weekend. I'm going to get up at six in the morning and mm-hmm. go for a run. But when that happens, like when you, you get to that point where it's just like you don't have motivation or you're it's already six in the morning on Saturday, you're like in bed, you're like, I don't want to do it, you know? Yeah. Dude, that's not. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, I was sorry. just going to say last thing or real quick. It's not that that's where motivation is out the door. That's where discipline yes. is the most yeah. important thing. Discipline yeah. will get you to where you want mm-hmm. to get. Exactly. And that's what I was going to say. Motivation doesn't last always. Yeah, you, know? Yeah, yeah. you know, imagine like. It's just that thing that gets you started. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Motivation is coffee. Mo- Eventually it wears off. Motiva- yeah. Motivation is a spark. That's what that is. But you need fuel, which is the discipline. Discipline. It's like marriage. Like loving somebody like at first like you're gonna have the sparks mm-hmm. you know? but yeah, later that on you gotta that choose, phase. You gotta, yeah you're gonna you yeah. gotta choose constantly choose to love that cultivate person. that love compromise him no it's true but yeah I, yeah like i was saying i think anybody can accomplish anything and that's for you bromigos too i think anybody can truly accomplish anything if they have like alex said the discipline for it and the mo- mo- motivation and I guess you could say passion for it. Determination. Determination yeah. for it to to really see the result at the very end. Because if they don't, then you're not you're not gonna have the entire recipe to make a good pie. Because mm-hmm. you need yeah. all those ingredients. I though. think initially you also have to I mean you have to be grateful with what you have, but also not satisfied with what where you're at. So yeah. Do you guys feel like at your guys' careers that you're, because I know you especially, Danny, Mm. uh, with your guys' careers that a lot of it is discipline that you need to continuously put in time and time and time. And even if you don't see results yet, Mm. there's still more time. Eventually there will be results. Do you guys, do you guys see that in your guys' own careers? Well, not in my own career. I think like one big thing like I've been focusing in the last few months, even years, is kind of like working out. Um, so I think, you know, we as men, we do care about our physique. You know, we say like, oh, man, I lost some weight or I gained some weight or like I'm getting stronger or like, you know, I've lost muscle mass. Um, and for me, like, I think it's always been like one of those things where well, since I was little, I was kind of chubby. Right. And so in my mind, I'm I'm always feeling like fat i like i feel like i'm like you know obviously you might say or other people might say like oh you're good you know or you're fit and stuff mm-hmm. but i've always been no i don't think you're fit i've been uh, <laughs> <laughs> self-conscious <laughs> about my my looks about yeah. my my weight and stuff so that's why like you know i like going to the gym and i like you know sometimes how i see myself but i still see myself like dang you know but lately like the last few months i've always like i just look at myself and i'm like you know you're not fat like you know that was just the younger self and other people telling you stuff mm-hmm. you know it's like, you know, you're healthy, you're good. And I've been working out and I do feel like I've gained a lot of muscle mass. And I know because I'm consistent, you know, sometimes I'll like, you know, one day I won't go, or two days off. I won't go, I'll slack, slack off or, or the holidays and stuff. But like, ultimately, like, you know, I push myself like, hey, I, I'm going to go at least 30 minutes. Even the days I don't want to go, I'll mm. go just 20 or 30 minutes, even just on a cardio yeah. um, machine, either treadmill or just lift get or a whatever. quick little pump in. Yeah. And like, I feel good afterwards, you know. Um, or like I'll go and do like arms or upper body one day, the next day legs or lower body. And so it's like, you know, lately, like, like I said, it's just, I've been more self-confident in myself, you know, at the end of the day, it's just myself, you know, my mind and my, my own mind over matter, mind over matter. And I shouldn't care about what other people have said or say, excuse me. And so, you know, I've realized that that's where, you know, you're your biggest enemy and you're also mm-hmm. your biggest advocate. So biggest critic yeah. and biggest critic. So like, you know, it doesn't matter what others might say or think at the end of the day, it's just you, you yourself and I, yeah. me, myself. And I. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think you probably, you probably see something that, or 
you've had that like kind of insecurity that a lot of people think the opposite of. I think you were one of the most athletic people that I know. I mean, not only no, I'm serious because like not go there, dude, Yeah, no, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm over here like because you Cause, feel oh, no. <laughs> no, um, yeah, you. I think you're one of the most consistent people that actually work out because they want to work out mm -hmm. versus people that just do it seasonally like new new, new year's is about to come around the corner yeah. so I'm a lot of people gonna, have that like okay I'm, I'm about to get going again i'm gonna do it this time yeah, i'm gonna lose yeah. weight and they actually do but after like march april may they're yeah. already l losing that that motivation to to keep going and you you've had that since day one and it might be a drive from your insecurity but I think a lot of people have that a lot of like for me it was always like I so I had I, I was in special ed for a long time and I think Danny knows this yeah I, I don't know if you, you, told you me. Know, yeah mm. I was in special ed so a lot of people thought I was just like <clears throat> dumb I was a dumb kid I think I just had a specific way of learning learning mm -hmm. that was more visual and audio and once i figured that out i could push myself to go further but i think a lot of that is i didn't want anybody to think i was dumb so i was going to try to force myself to be the smartest person in the room mm -hmm. so i think that's my insecurity i guess you could say that i wanted to be the smartest best person out there so that no one could ever say that about me because mm. I could mm -hmm. be like, okay, you want to call me dumb because maybe I said something wrong or maybe I don't know exactly everything on that topic, but on specific things that matter, I'm going to show you up mm. and I'm going to prove you wrong nonstop, continue pushing forward. When you're on vacation having fun, I'm going to be grinding. When you guys are on netflix or playing call of duty i'm gonna be learning mm. that's why i got a, a lot of it is why i got rid of my tv because of the fact that while everybody else is watching tv i'm gonna be grinding i'm gonna be learning i'm gonna be trying to push forward didn't you just get hulu oh my wife did oh okay on her laptop <laughs> 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 no but yeah it was it was cheap I'm a quote. I'm a quote him on that after he sends like seven memes in Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> meme after meme yeah. after meme. Yeah. yeah. As I wave them away from my house. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny that it's funny that you, like you bring that up though. Like you see that like you see that little fat boy in the mirror, and like you see that like. Like, okay, I, I said that kind of weird. Like, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said like, it. I said it in like, I just said my biggest. I, 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 no, I, no, I, I said it not meaning it like it. Like it's not like an insult when I said it, but like you, you know what I mean. And then you saw like you know you saw that little kid that like I don't know how to word it, but like you saw you saw. Oh, younger version, I, like that like, young person in front of me that was basically like someone that I hated, yeah that yeah. I so you wanted to grow from him. You same thing. Like you saw that that kid that was like wasn't learning well so you wanted to grow out of him like for me it was like i feel like for me it's like um i felt like there was there was parts in my life when i was younger where i didn't feel like loved or i didn't feel liked so then i feel like at a certain point i tried to do or like play a role uh for people to where they could like me so i wanted to be likable so i think that was one thing that i grew up kind of becoming like wanting to be liked like not not necessarily like in like a popular way or like anything, but just wanting to like make other people like feel good, make other people feel like they're like. being listened to. Yeah, being liked. Mm -hmm. um, and then essentially hoping like, oh, I'd receive the same in return. Mm -hmm. That's where I think you and you know, yeah. that's kind of funny <clears throat> with all of us and especially with you, Danny. I think a lot of people. Like like you drive things so. yeah they, they get driven towards you because of the fact that you're very likable you're very approachable mm -hmm. hey. approachable i was telling um alex this uh in one of the podcasts that it was just me and him mm -hmm. that we were the way we described you was the salt that brings uh, out yeah, the flavor in everybody that we bring in and that's why we, a lot of the times when we do a podcast i i always want you there mm -hmm. because of the fact that 
<clears throat> you bring the best out of Alex, and you also bring the. <laughs> what? Sometimes you bring like, the worst out it was of like Alex. Twenty minutes ago, you, are you done? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but you yeah. also bring the best out of other people, like yeah. myself and like um, Rich, Richie, Rich, Richie, Rich. So, and you always do that with a lot of people. Mm. So, there's a lot of people that do see you as that one friend that they want to always be with. Mm. So yeah. I think I think appreciate that. Yeah. I think we've all kind of grown <laughs> into the people that we were trying not to be. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Richie Rich? What about you, Rich? What was the question? We're, we're, I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it was even a question. I think, I think it was just like a... We're just venting our childhood. Hurt. Yeah, we're yeah. Our childhood tra and traumas, you know. Yeah. It's not like we're going to, you know, bash each other later on. Oh, you were bad. <laughs> <laughs> you're not even bad, dude. You're I the know. skinniest one here. <laughs> I know, but like we're saying, like oh, we're looking at the inside of like that. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, so it's, it's like it's like for me, if it's, it's like it, or like if if we were to be like, are oh, you dumb? I'd be like it's like you're not dumb. Like yeah, you know. Or like but for it's me, like I don't know, like our past selves yes, where yes. we've had in a way traumas or things yeah. that kind of like in our minds we would not like, you know, yeah. or you know people would call us something or we would, and then we started thinking about it and you know it would just you know create that mindset of like yeah. dang, you know, you feel bad about yourself. So. It's true. Like I mean, we look at you and nobody's like, bro, you're not fat. Mm -hmm. Like, and I think like, the same thing with you. Like, I don't think people look at Joe and be like, he's kind of dumb. Like nobody does. Like. Okay, maybe I'll. <laughs> no, like, no, yeah, no. I, I told Joel. I, I definitely think um, he's fat. One of the smartest. <laughs> <laughs> that I yeah. do. Call you know, I think you guys that, have the reverse. Yeah, you guys have, have it reversed. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay with the fat part. <laughs> uh, I am fat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but Rich, do you have a? Like a Rich is like, no, I'm good. Rich is I'm like, good. I don't, <laughs> do you have an insecurity I was from when you were younger that you grew out of, or, or yeah, still try like, to. or like, yeah, try to, I, like I was, one that you I try to push in, out of, yeah. I was in handicap classes too. I know yeah. handicap. handicap, special. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here, Rich? <laughs> no, just, I was. I'm leaving. This guy pushed. <laughs> I don't think he meant it like that. Uh, I'm sorry. That willpower, man. That willpower yeah. made it. I, 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 I got out again. of that wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> he stood up. He's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> you got to want to bad enough. You got to <laughs> eat my legs. <laughs> you want to bad enough. Either you want to or you God. don't. <laughs> <laughs> my legs are messed He's up. Like, you better though. stand up. Oh, man. That, if you that, believe in it, it'll happen. Yeah. That's where my argument just <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> No, I was in there special ed yeah. classes too. They put me in yeah. special ed classes. Can I? Cause I couldn't stay still in my seat, and oh, because yeah. because I would um, I would hold my pin like this. Oh, this is oh, like okay. Wait, what do you mean? Like that? Like instead crayon. of like uh, oh, instead, instead of like, like that. Instead of going like that, I would hold it like that. Okay. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. Rich Wait, well, what's wrong with that? Like. You no, couldn't probably write. Maybe couldn't. No, because I was. Were you yeah, able to I write? was writing like this. Uh -huh. I couldn't write like this. I I had to hold a pencil the like pen this like to that. write. Yeah. yeah, but is like is that bad? Like, because I feel like if I, I, I as guess long as so, you can they write, put me in special ed class. I don't say like as long as you can write like that. Like if it's readable or like legible. Like, I, mean, I don't. I don't think maybe it was, it was I'm legible. Assuming it was legible. Like yeah. they couldn't read it and because and of that. I was always I was picked on tough. Yeah. You were picked on? Oh, yeah. Was, See, that's was, hard to believe because no, I'm I chubby like now. You would pick on people. You were chubby then. You're skinny now. I was skinny then. I'm chubby now. Uh, <laughs> and I was, I was picked on. See, yeah. I was always short and fat. <laughs> I, was you know, I, have, I have a picture, but I have a little six pack. <laughs> oh, yeah? A little yeah. six pack? Yeah. Nice. Um, no, I was picked on tough because of that and because I was super dark. They called, they called me. Burnt, oh, they called really? me burnt brownie. Really? That was, yeah. <laughs> Over there at Yakima. Yakima. Yakahu. Yep. Yakahu. Yeah. yeah, and so it was crazy because um, every day I would go home and cry because mm. I was really? kicked on top. And then one day, so you were um, being like actually bullied, bullied, like full on, like bullied. straight up. Yeah. And then um, one day I was fed up. I had, yeah. I had enough. Took a gun to school. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Always is, taking it too this far. This is why we say you take it too far. Dude. Always Come taking on. it too far. I'm just saying you took it, but he didn't use it. Oh <laughs> what happened? What happened? What happened, Rich? Our respects. You, you uh, you balled up your fist. Or no, so yeah, we got off the off the bus. So it was weird. My my school. The bus took us from my school mm -hmm. to another school. 
And then from there, it would they drop people off. take us home. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. Why not just go straight home? They took us Picked up other students? No, Maybe it was like no? one. off and then we would get on another bus. Uh-huh. Like a transit. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. It was weird. Anyways, we g- they were bullying me on that on that bus mm. from one school to another. And I just had enough. I got off the bus. When we got to the school, I got off the bus. And uh, I grabbed his head. And, and the walls were like ri- ri- sticking like out. Rigid, like rigid. Like the. Yeah. The, yeah. yeah. I grabbed his head. Stucco. And I slammed it into the. Uh, no, the brick. Oh, oh, I dang. Slammed into the brick and cracked his head wide open. Ooh. Oof. Yeah. And so. <clears throat> then eventually he went no, to so become the champ. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the school. And my aunt's house lived like three blocks down there. Mm-hmm. And I just ran to my aunt's house. Yeah. And so I told my aunt this story. She doesn't. She says she doesn't remember. Yeah. Anyways, I ran to her house and I hid in her closet for like an hour. And she didn't even know I was there. And then it, some teachers came and knocked on the door and told, hey, Rich is here, yada, yada, yada. Told her what happened. And she says, okay. Well, there wasn't nothing she could do. So she just said... She, She'll call her his mom or whatever. So and then the teachers left and the aunt came in the closet and kicked me, bro. Yeah, really? <laughs> While I was there. And and I I was the guy that did wrong, but in my case I wasn't the bad guy. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. I was I was hurt. You were the one getting like picked on and I was yeah, hurt. Was like, I wasn't yeah. legit trying to be <clears throat> evil guy. I was hurt. And so she went in and kicked me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she went and kicked me, and it hurt me even more. Yeah, dang. Because like, that like came from being bullied, and now it's like, up to them, and then now that's coming from yeah. the family when, when too. That should have been my safe place, right? Yeah. Your safe haven, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because she's family, thing, right? Yeah, that's tough. And maybe, maybe that, yeah, that is why you ended up becoming state champ. I mean, you ended up going into wrestling. You went into no, wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. How long until, until you got into wrestling after that? That was like. Third grade, third grade. Yeah. So I. Um, Dang, your aunt kicked a third grader. You yeah, cracked bro. someone's head in third grade. Yeah. That's crazy. Say so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> but dang, that that's yeah. got to be tough too. Mm-hmm. I mean, dealing with that and yeah, like I said, I think that's probably also drove you to yeah wanting to better because yourself I was, and I was I had enough. To, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean and. It, I in my life I've come to certain points in my life where I've had enough of things right you know, where you're just fed up yeah mm-hmm. and so like I talk like I'm successful and everything but I wasn't always like doing the things that I do mm-hmm. you know I was I was that guy jumping from job to job you know and I didn't have no education or um, any type of credential to like go for a certain job you know because right. you qualified and these people better get me or I was their, I'm their best bet, mm-hmm. you know? I, that wasn't me. I got the job that somebody gave me a chance. Right. And so I had enough. Mm, yeah. I was fed up. And so, like, after I got fired from that last job, I was so fed up. But I, I drove myself. No, I probably took the bus because I was so broke. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah, took yeah. the bus to uh, the trade school there, and I enrolled. I, said, I showed up. I said, what mm-hmm. do I got to do? And I enrolled like a month later, my class started and I got certified in welding. That was after high school? Yeah, that was like four years after high school. Four years after high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you but I mean, that, you will, you will get it. yeah, you want yeah. it bad enough, you'll like, yeah. you get it. You you want to or you don't? Yeah, you had to hit that like. I think you gotta point. be, yeah, because some people would like. You need to hit rock bottom. Like, yeah, so, well, people need to hit some, dep- some people. It depends, yeah, yeah. like, because, yeah, like, yeah. me, I had a re- hit, I needed to yeah. hit rock bottom, I mm-hmm. needed to be frustrated. To do yeah, that. other people are like, just are just, yeah, already, some people are just, they're boom, just already they're just set up. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, their parents created a, a college fund for them yeah. and this and that, yeah. and, yeah. or and, and they're in <laughs> they're in sixth grade and already have 650 credit score, you right, know, right, like. Right. Yeah. You know, I feel like and like as an example to that person, like I feel like Tim, Timmy T is like that. Like, like I I haven't seen him like hit rock bottom. Like, you know, I'm not going to there's no wood here. But like, yeah, I've never seen him hit rock bottom. And I feel like I see him just succeeding and succeeding. And like, you know, he, he got his, you know, um, bachelor's, I think. Yeah, we got his, his bachelor's. UCSB. UCSB. You know, now he's in the uh, sheriff academy, you know, like, you know, he, he wanted to be a lawyer at one point. But then he ended up switching. But right away, like he ended up going 
Sheriff Academy, and he's yeah. like, right now he's just like, he's really busy right now. He's you know succeeding, and you so, know, mm-hmm. but like he, th- th- there wasn't a point where I, like I saw him like hit rock bottom or something that like made him be like that. It's just like his institution, like the way he was brought up, is you know I feel like his parents did a really good job with him. I could I could probably say the same thing uh, with mm-hmm. Isaac. I, I yeah, with Isaac a too. Lot yeah. Of, a lot of the way you and Tim are is the way me and Isaac were, mm. and Isaac was the same way. He he went to the same college as me and everything, but he just like bit by bit just kept yeah. going and then ended up going to San Jose, graduated from there. Now he's working. For had a Nike. vision. And yeah. Yeah. Had a vision and, and what he wanted and how did he wanted to get to that yeah. point but you see, and got over there. That's uh, in that case, they don't have money. They don't, you know, have that fun they don't mm-hmm. have like someone giving them money that's more of like the yeah. parents giving Parenting. them instilling right. in them that motivation or that you know work ethic that strong and yeah consistent yeah. work ethic and some people like you know don't need to hit rock bottom they can just start from exactly. there mm-hmm. and you know just and continue my, yeah you know? and exactly yeah. and that's what i was saying you mm-hmm. see the people that <clears throat> that are frustrated and do it because they wanted to bad enough. And there's people they like, of course they wanted to, but they're just more set up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my kids, I'm gonna make sure they're set up. Five yeah. bucks in there, you know. Yeah, yeah but, that's what I, that's what I was saying before. Like how like that's like as a father, I I think all of us, you know, when, when we become fathers or like rich, for example, like that's like our one of our goals is like for our kids to be in better situations than we were, mm-hmm. you know, have them set up. Yeah, yeah. But you know what's gonna be crazy is that you're gonna appreciate it when you get there way more than your kids are because of the fact that you had to like grind and scratch yeah. and, and climb to the top to mm-hmm. get to that point but even to the position you are now yeah. you had to like work hard for that versus once you 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 have your kids you're going to kind of like guide them okay you don't have to do this because i went through it and i'm teaching you this because i didn't learn this until i was 18 or something like that versus yeah. them they're, it's like they're six years old they're you're already kind of like throwing bits and pieces at them that that they need to know yeah what's crazy is like and i mean i don't know how to say it but like in your head like one of the best memories or one of like your best milestones is going to be when you hit rock bottom where like you at the same time you never want your kid to hit rock bottom you know but it's like you're so grateful you hit rock bottom like that's like one of your best memories because it's like that caused you to jump to the next level but you never want to see your kid go through that exactly you know yeah it's a it's Which an interesting dilemma mm-hmm. yep. so you feel yeah. like you, you hit rock bottom at that one point where you, you got fired from that job do you think that's that was your your rock yeah. bottom um I wouldn't say it was the rock bottom because I was jumping from the job to job. You couldn't. Or you're like turning you could, point. You couldn't get any lower. <laughs> right. It was just when I was just finally frustrated. Yeah. Of living in the dumps. And you decided like that that turning point to like shift the switch. go yeah. towards. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. this is what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna, yeah. how I'm gonna. Do. I didn't even know what I was going to the trade school for. Yeah. You know, I just went in and said, "What what what what, what course? What do you guys have that yeah. I can yeah. get into?" Alex, do you feel like you you've ever you've ever had that? Like, uh, like hit rock sh- bottom? Not rock bottom, more like a uh, a shift in mentality as far as like a turning point where it's like, okay, you know what? I'm not doing that. I'm going to do this. And that's what I, I think I'm going to be going towards and be successful in. Yeah. So your question is kind of one of the deeper ones. Uh, in what ways have you changed over the past year? And um, I was just thinking about like all of your guys' you know, stories and how mine recently with with my job and then also with my relationship where I was in a relationship with someone where I just felt like this is not what I want and this is something I need to change. Also my job, it's in, I'm in a place where I don't feel comfortable. Uh, sometimes you're gonna have to go through it, right? Or sometimes you're gonna have to deal with it and you know, there's no excuses. But I, I was in a place where I could have changed that where no. i'm like oh i know i have the opportunity i'm young i got i'm, I'm financially <clears throat> safe right now i have you know a lot of time let me let me and i don't have huge responsibilities i don't have payments i don't have you know to worry about what i'm gonna be doing the next few months you know so i'm like let, let's let, i'm gonna i'm gonna change it you know i'm gonna change my relationship and i'm gonna change my career i want to pursue something else something different and uh most importantly i think like trusting god like Every time I, I I think about it, like, oh, okay, I need to better myself. I need to do something different. I, I also think about God and ask him, 
Like, is this what you want me to do? Mm-hmm. Is this the right thing, you know? And I just hope and pray every day that it, it is what it what his will is, basically. And um, I, I've never hit rock bottom, thank God. And all, obviously, I also wouldn't want my kids. Um, I'm not saying, like, I can prevent that. That's inevitable. But mm-hmm. I feel like if it happens, it happens. If it happens to me, so be it. If it happens to my children, God willing, it doesn't, so be it. But I've had to make many changes throughout my life. But I think recently, like, I've made huge changes where I know that it's the right thing to do. And I think God is going to be also there to help me out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you'll never never know until you do it, right? You never know until you open that door and you go through it and you're like, okay, this is what's next. You know, this is the next step in my life, um, which is good. You know, change is good. Uh, not all the time, but for the most part, you know, sometimes it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, career wise, I'm ready for what's next. Uh, relationship wise, I'm just you know waiting on God's timing. Obviously, I'll do my part, but you know, I'm 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 happy. I'm like you know, even Content, though I don't have a job, I don't have plan. anything lined up. You know, I'm I'm good. You know, mm-hmm. thankfully and thank God because you know some some people don't have the opportunity to like just leave right. a job. You know, and they're like, no, I need to have something lined up. I have to feed my children, my family. Um, you know, clothe them and pr- pay rent or whatever. Like. I, I can't complain, and I'm mm-hmm. so grateful um, for everything that God has done for me in my life and my family mm-hmm. and friends and everything. So, yeah, um, change is always going to happen, but that's that's the more recent things that have been going on. Mm. Yeah, that's good because, um, yeah, I think one of the ways that I bring up a prayer for God or to God is um, I always I always see it as three different things, so I'll just put it on with the, the cards. Um a lot of the, the last few months I've been praying this where it's like I kind of see it as a platter. And I always I always say, like, God, I'm bringing my job with Anderson Systems, my uh, business, Copper Rose Plumbing, and then even this, UNFC. And whatever direction you want me to go, that's, the, that's, that's where I'm going to go. If any of these fail, I'm bringing it to you. You decide if... I get rid of one if I continue with one. If I go with one specific one, forget about the other two. Whatever direction you push me towards pursuing, that's where I'm gonna go. And if it's none of them, well, I'll I'll end up like you. We'll find something to put on the tray. Mm-hmm. But for now, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring that to you, and you do with what it is in whatever whatever direction it is that I'm gonna go. So I think that's that's been my prayer recently, where I just say, like, whatever direction, whatever you want me to stop, wherever you want me to go, you let me know, I'll go that way. Hmm. And it's tough because there's a lot of stuff like the business that right now I feel like it's not getting the attention that it needs, but it might be also because God doesn't want me to put my attention on that mm-hmm. specifically. Mm-hmm. And it could be like UNFC. Maybe this is actually working out and this is actually going to pers- like eventually become something based on this progress, but it could easily change and I'm going to just leave it to God to guide me in whatever direction that is. Yeah. Amen. I mean, it could even be, you know, something even as simple as these conversations are like right now, you know, we're just talking, we're just having conversations, you know, we're, you know, building each other up and stuff. But some people, some listeners are, you know, they're, it's impacting them. Like it's, it's like, it's touching their hearts and it's like, man, like, I didn't know, like, if you really want it, like you, you could just actually go do it. Like, and that's like, that's news for some people. Yeah. Like that, that's motivation for some people. And, <clears throat> you know, there's people like how we said, you know, there's motivation, there's, you know, there's that drive, there's that discipline that you need. Um, you know, there's people who they only have that motivation, but they don't have that discipline to keep going. So, you know, it's, um, I think you should uh, talk about your your uh, direction and path because mm-hmm. I, I I don't think I've ever seen you this motivated for one specific thing, which yeah. is the schooling. Mm-hmm. Like I thought you were going to go a different direction, and you surprised me with it. Yeah. Well, what you direction did you think I was going to go? I honestly thought when the union was going to call you, you were yeah. going to say yes. So I was I honestly mm-hmm. thought like okay, eventually they they are going to mm-hmm. call you, and you yeah. are going to be doing the same thing that I'm doing. Yeah. And once they called you. You kind of told them no. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, Mm -hmm. he said no to the union? Like, dude, if it's working out for me, like, 
mm. eventually it'll work out for you but right i mean that's where you can yeah i mean i think you know i i started off like the first job i ever really had or like significant job like real job that i ever had um it was pretty much you know property management and i feel like i went from you know being a temp there and like within a couple months became a property manager and like i felt like for when it came to work like and like learning and like really just like becoming an employee like i was really good at advancing and so that's that's how i feel like i was a property manager two different times in property management in a in a line in a what was it a span of like it was like a span months, of like, like a year or two, two years like yeah, which so is pretty like, impressive yeah so i feel like it was very easy for me to advance um and it's a you know for some people it's that's a career or, you know that they can be in that the rest of their life you know but for me it wasn't enough like i felt like just the the industry was just too it wasn't secure enough and I wanted something secure because I knew like I had goals. I had like ambitions like I want to be able to provide for my family. I want to, you know, have a family, be a husband, be a father one day. And I don't want one day just for my property to sell or my my company to sell my property. And then it's like, oh, I'm out of I'm out of a job. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, wait, like, what am I supposed to do now? Um, <clears throat> so I wanted something more secure, which is like why I was kind of going towards the union. Um and yeah, uh, for for those who don't know, um, when I applied for the plumbing's un- plumbers union, Danny was right next to me the entire time. Mm-hmm. We took our test together. We did our oral interview together. Yeah, it took me two years to get in, and then it. I think they tried calling Danny after like two years and like yeah. four months or something like that. I think yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. I eventually, I, so I you know I had to get kind of out of property management. So I went into uh, I just did like a corporate office job at a. Uh, um it was it was like a temp job but it was for harbor freight um and i liked it it was really good i could i knew like there was growth there but i still didn't see myself there like it was just uh i don't know it was i just couldn't see myself at that job forever um so stepping stone yeah yeah it it just it felt like a really good stepping stone i'll tell you that like it felt like it was a really good um part for me to like kind of transition in in my career um but yeah i mean i kind of i looked into like i i always when i was a kid like i i really wanted to be like a psychiatrist um because i really liked helping people and then you know like you went to school for that too didn't you uh well yeah in college i majored in psychology um so i mean the medical field in itself i was always like intrigued about so i mean i i looked into like x-rays and stuff like just like more general med- like medical stuff just kind of looked into it and you know i found x-rays or radiology and i like i actually got intrigued and for about a year i was just kind of like kind of looking in and out um eventually uh i got like there's a recruiter that like hit me up They're like hey just come to the school check it out just, you know no commitments just check it out and when i did like i actually liked it I, like i i was like you know what like i think i want to do this and um it was an it's an advanced program, so I had to test into it and everything. But um, you know, um, I'm at the end pretty much where I literally just have to do my state exam. Couple weeks away. Couple weeks away, um, and yeah, I have my license. Nice. So, but like the the thing what I like about radiology is like there's not just I mean there's like like for the first time. I can see my career, like I can envision my career. Like I can see, all right, in the next couple of years, I'm going to be here. Next couple of years after that, I'm going to be doing this and this and this, you know, like for example, now it's like, okay, I'm going to be an x-ray, limited x-ray tech. But in two, three years, I'm going to be an, a radiation technician. So I'm going to have that license. And then maybe a year after that, I'll be certified in MRI. Maybe a year after that or months after that, I'll, I'll have CAT scan. And there's like just different modalities that I, I'm actually really interested in. So like I like different levels to it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I like I like what the future holds for me in in my career. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because yeah. you could see yourself climbing up the ladder, mm-hmm. putting another notch, another certification, yeah. another another skill on your resume that's going to help you even potentially have multiple opportunities or multiple yeah. doors open for you. Um, like I think we were talking about the cottage hospitals is, is like yeah, an ideal, yeah. ideal place to be eventually. And there's a lot of work. Like there's a lot of, um, 
positions like i had applied for, for a position and like they called me back like right away like literally mm-hmm. like two days later or like a day later they called me back they're like hey are you available or whatever like you know we're really interested in you and i was like oh like i actually don't even have my license yet and they're like oh well when are you gonna get it like you know like um when oh, are you so take the like, exam? they need people yeah like they're really like like needing i was like oh well you know like you know as you know like this is a six-week process and blah blah, blah. They're like okay well you know let's stay in touch like you know once you get it like call me like maybe we'll have something for you so, um so it's like just like that like they called like i applied just to see like what the process was and it was very quick so there's a lot of a lot Prospects. of openings, a lot of uh, positions available. So you got their hopes up. <laughs> yeah, I got the yeah. <laughs> I pretty much got their hopes up. But there's a lot of opportunities in 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 radiology, which mm. is something that I like. And the cool thing about that is that you can you can cross that through different states. I mean, like yeah, yeah. Certain go, um, well, I mean to a certain extent, but you know what I mean. Like there, yeah, yeah. wherever there's a. Uh, uh, urgent care uh, mm-hmm. hospital anywhere where yeah. th- where they do x-rays yeah there's going to be a position that maybe needs to be filled or someone's going to be retiring soon right or they're just maybe need an extra person there's a position there potential everywhere yeah yeah like the one thing i do like about like that job is or like the that career is like if i were to move anywhere like any any place needs x-rays mm-hmm. like oh, yeah. if, if there's you know there's certain places where it's like you know seasonal stuff is like okay like let's just say like agriculture or whatever like there are certain seasons where it's like they're out of work or something mm-hmm. or like construction it's like when it's raining when it's snowing and stuff like they yeah. can't they can't work there's limitations for you know medical field there's the medical field at, you need a medical field, you know you, the, you need you know that's why they always say uh law enforcement <clears throat> medical field and education they're mm-hmm. always going to be a need. There's always yeah. going to be a need for those core um, lines of work because of the fact that it's it's a necessity. It's a necessity, yeah. Necessity, no, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, 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 this is like the first time that I feel like, yeah, like I said, like I can envision, like it, it, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I think when like when you can see like your next five years, like just like you could just envision it. Like it's like there's times where like you're just like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I for a little bit, like even when I was in property management, when I was working at Harbor Freight, like I was like, like, what's my what's my next thing? You know, like, how am I going to like, am I really going to be here? Like, I would ask myself those questions. And it's like, like, is this really it? Like this is like, where am I going to go from here? You know, how can I grow from here? Mm -hmm. How am I going to get to like, how am I going to buy a house like when I was in private management, it's like, how am I going to buy a house if I'm living in my property? Um, so, I mean, that's that's the one thing that excites me in that it, I feel like it's easy for me to be motivated by it because I'm loving it, too. Like, I love what I do. So Yeah, I it, it's always it's always pretty much uh, great when you love what you do. Like, yeah. I'm assuming you, Richard, you love what you do, right? You're outdoors. You're building fences. You, you're happy with the end project. You're dealing with yeah. your team that you you build a com- camaraderie with them i'm sure there's that sense of like satisfaction from it right yeah. oh yeah 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 i, I feel like when, when you love what what you do it's like you're never really working yeah. you know it's like you're just you're you're living life in a sense like you're you know you're doing obviously you know there's those stressful days and everything like that but like it just gets it work just feels easy in a sense like I don't know how to explain it. No, but, I, I yeah. get you because for me, I always get this sense of satisfaction when I complete a job mm-hmm. because of the fact that it's like, oh, it was messed up. Yeah. Now it's fixed. Yeah. And you see it and you're like, it works. Everything mm-hmm. is nice. Everything is good. So you get that like mm-hmm. instant gratification where it's like, I did this, like building yeah. a puzzle or something like building yeah. a Lego set or something like that. And you fix it and it works and everything. And then the customer's happy that all ties in together i get those hits of like i don't know like endorphins yeah. or, or dopamine hit every yeah. single time um that like high of it every single job that i finish yeah and i'd so, imagine like even for you like sometimes there's like you see this problem but like in your head you see the solution you know yeah so it's like you know i i kind of see that like that's kind of how i feel like with my career it's like yeah like right now like yeah technically i don't have the full time a full time position, you know. Technically I don't have my license yet, you know. But it's like 
but I see my career. Like I see my career. Like mm-hmm. I yeah. see where I'm gonna be. So yeah, that's that's the one thing that kind of keeps me like, motivated. Calm, yeah, motivated. Like like all in due time. Like the do. one thing that's like stressful is the waiting part of it which is right now but it's going to be worth it in the Ooh, end and that's you the know? most important thing. that's yeah that's what the bible is all about patience you know? yeah. patience patience being yeah. patient on his promises and mm-hmm. all that is to come yeah a lot of good stuff yeah a lot of good stuff mm-hmm. okay uh i think we're getting close to ending it we're dang we almost hit two hours two hours in this two one? hours on this podcast oh wow so any okay up, my bad my bad guys my <laughs> any bad. uh any last uh I guess you could say motivation that you would give to a, a person that hasn't gotten to that point. To the viewers. To the viewers. To the hey, other Bromigos r- that haven't maybe gotten the opportunity or reached the opportunity to be able to switch their line of career or find a sense of purpose or mm-hmm. build a business that has potentially almost gotten to that point where it's fully functioning on its own. Is there any like motivation that you guys would give to that person? Hit rock bottom. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I would say to anybody listening, if this is speaking to you and if your feelings tugged or um, frustrated, mm-hmm. um, if you need help, let me know. I you reach out. I have no problem. I, Helping you reach your goals. If there's anything I could do to help, yeah. if I could just be a coach, if I could just be a, a cheerleader, a, a guy that texts and gives you a, a an encouraging text for the day, like whatever you need. I wish I had somebody who would text me, like, "Hey man, you're almost there." Yeah, you're hey, you can there. count on me. I'll, oh, I'll be. Yeah. I'll, I, hey, whatever you're doing, stop doing that. Put those leg takes gloves on <laughs> <laughs> and get to work. Delete your Instagram. Delete that delete. Instagram. Get rid of that TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't get. Don't 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 go too crazy like me. But yeah, if you get, if anybody, if you feel tugged, if you and if you need help, reach out. Mm-hmm. I, I, if I, if there's anything I can do to help, I'll help. Yeah, and that's a important thing to reach out to anybody that you. Confine, confide in, confide in. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah. Um, that you confide in. Basically, if you feel like you know you need to say something or just kind of like I don't know, talk to someone, find someone that you really mm-hmm. trust and just talk to them. So yeah, I think it's important to to be able to express yourself or open yourself to to someone that you really trust and you know. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get if you want to get transparent, get transparent with me. I I. I, I say that's my biggest weakness, but it's also my biggest strength. So, yeah, you know, uh, I'm I'm all ears as well. And uh, uh, the last thing I will, I don't know, I kind of said something, but I think the last thing you had said about how, or real quick, I was going to ask you, how old are you? 31. How old are you? 28. I'm 28. 24. Okay. And we still haven't reached our end Prime. goal like or yeah. where oh, we yeah. want to be so yeah. it's a process it takes time be patient mm-hmm. enjoy the process the journey you know it's about the whole race yeah. it's not just the the yes we want to get there at the end but mm-hmm. just know it's 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 a race and it's going to go like this too mm-hmm. so and just be patient there's enjoy the little victories be grateful for the losses if i if i could just say one more thing i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> and that's the whole wait, point i got one more thing to say too. <laughs> oh. you got another one <laughs> yeah, yeah, say, i'm gonna wait for you to say it though. say it all <laughs> say it all say it all in yeah. the bible there's a man by the name of elijah he was running away from uh a witch named jezebel and she she commanded an order that he, she wanted this guy dead. Mm-hmm. And so this guy was so scared, he ran out of the city as far as he can into the into the desert. Laid on... I don't get the Bible. He went out, he went and laid... He went as far as he can into the desert and laid under a tree. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's what I think is weird. Yeah, yeah. How's a tree going to thrive? Right. Out there. Yeah. In yeah. the desert. That's another preaching. Yeah, that's, Anyways, that's, no. So what I'm trying to get at is... <clears throat> He uh, ran as far as way as far as way into the desert as he can, out of fear, mm-hmm. out of fear, and then he laid under that tree in hopes that he would die. And he asked God, "God, this is it. This is where I'm gonna. Listen. This is where I'm gonna lay. This is where I need you to take my life. I'm done. Like, please, like, 
he didn't say those words, but he did. He he it wanted like, that was he his, wanted that yeah. to be his ending, mm-hmm. and he like he took a nap. You know, that's about it. He took a nap, and he woke up, and he woke up to a fresh baked bread, a loaf of bread. It was fresh. Mm-hmm. First of all, where's the oven? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Second of all, like. Yeah, there's no second of all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he woke up to a, a fresh, Big a fresh break bre- loaf of bread, and and God told him to eat. Mm-hmm. Basic and that loaf of bread fed him. He fed, fed his body, and made him sufficient enough for the next forty days. Mm-hmm. So basically, what the Bible is saying in the story is. Where you see there's an ending, God is saying your best days are still ahead. Yeah, there's a beginning. So wherever, yeah. wh- whoever's listening, your best days are still ahead. Mm-hmm. So take a nap That's and good. eat some bread. Take a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> Wait for that bread. Get that bread. <laughs> Wait for the bread to, mm-hmm. to show up. Mm-hmm. I probably, I, I think I would say one of the things that I, I always, I always throw this quote out there. I, the best way to eat an elephant. You guys know what the best way to eat an elephant? One Carne bite asada. at a time. One bite at a time. Oh, that too. Mm-hmm. It's the best way to eat an <laughs> elephant. So, if if the goal is don't eat elephants. Don't. <laughs> if the goal is to eventually uh, get to doing CAT scans, X rays, getting that full nuclear license, radiation, nuclear radiation, whatever it is that you're going to yeah. be doing, the best way to do it is one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And I think wherever you can to continue progress, always look at it like this. If you were racing someone else, what's one thing that you could do today that can further that race the other guy? If you guys are racing and you guys are running 24 hours or let's say just eight hours, what's that uh, extra little thing that you could do for half an hour, an hour, an extra two hours on the weekend Mm -hmm. to get you closer to that? And then you'll see that progress. Never stop the progress. That would probably be it. And I'll throw in my, my favorite quote. They can't blame you if your bone broke, but if you die broke, that is your fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe that. A lot of us grew up broke, but if we die broke, that's going to be on us. Born and raised in the projects. It's going to be on us. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right. We'll end it there. This bu- Catch Powerful us next girls. time. Toledo. Toledo. <laughs>